السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Looked like there was a few hundred people here. It sounds like there's about ten. Very comforting. Let me just get my uh, clock here. I tend to overspeak. <coughs> Light is a good thing. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik wa karim wa an'am ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his final messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, his beloved, the Prophet Muhammad, the often praised, salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi wa ala alihi. Uh, it's an honor to be with you here to speak to myself and to my brothers and sisters um, a little bit about our religion and about our way, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way of His final messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but actually the way of all of His messengers because the final messenger came down to reiterate in essence what all the messengers have come before Him saying, which is really what Allah wants to tell human beings. And it's very, very simple when our father Adam and our mother Eve disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and descended upon doing so from the garden to earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them in the Qur'an. He said it to them and we have it written in the Qur'an. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قُلْ نَهْبِطُوا مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًى فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We, the royal we of power, not plurality, we said, all of you descend from it from this garden, from this more pure, pure state that they were in, which means Adam and Eve, but also Iblis, who was there at that moment, uh, Satan, Shaitan, Devil, Lucifer, Loser, Lucy, <laughs> call him whatever you want to call him, Al Pacino, <laughs> you know, um, Iblis was to also come down. And so you should all go down, because now it's time for this Really, what you can understand as a test, but also as this opportunity to get closer to God, to the Creator, to our Maker, to truth, because that's what Allah is, to reality, to beauty, and to justice, because that's also what Allah is. It's an opportunity for us to know Allah and to know God in a way that no other creature had been given before, not even the jinn, not even the jinn of which Iblis was. He is of the jinn, another creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the jinn weren't given this chance, and this is why Iblis was envious of Adam alayhi salam. Because he was asked to prostrate him and all the angels also to Adam alayhi salam, which is really to the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Adam alayhi salam and out of obedience to Allah. But what is it that made Adam special? This opportunity that we all have. This Adamic nature this Adamic potential within us. The opportunity to know Allah in ways that no other creatures have been given before. To manifest all of the divine names. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names, divine attributes, divine characteristics. They're broken down into two major categories. Sifatul Jalal and Sifatul Jamal. The attributes of majesty and the attributes of beauty. There's majestic qualities and there's beautiful qualities. The majestic qualities include the avenger, the irresistible, the crusher. He can get whatever he wants done, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who can harm and so forth. The one who can prevent and take away. But the beautiful qualities, the compassionate, the merciful, the ever-friendly, the intimate, the ever-near. And you could go on. You could break down the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into these two groups. Ultimately, and there's also attributes of perfection. There are attributes of perfection that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. And human beings have been given this unique opportunity 
to manifest the characteristics of Allah as the Khulafa of Allah, as the successors of Allah, as the vicegerents of Allah. This is all translating one Arabic word. It's like a zip file that you have to find out. You know, it's, now it's just a nice small crowd, so I can just kind of relax here. I'm going to take this coat off. I'm sorry, there was just a personal conversation I was having with someone. They just whisked me in and said, it's time to speak, so I have one. <laughs> but anyway, and this, these attributes, you as a Khalifa, we as Khulafa of Allah, you could to translate this word, we are trustees of God, we are representatives of God, we are the deputies of God, we are the vicegerents of God, almost like the ambassadors of God. We represent the divine on this planet. We are that meeting place between heaven and earth. In us can truth manifest itself the most. This is the opportunity that all the children of Adam have been given. An opportunity to reflect these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as far as the sifat jalal go, the attributes of, of majesty, we have to, the way we manifest them is in opposition. In other words, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghani, he is independent, he is rich, he is in no need, we can't be that, so we can be the opposite. We can be fuqara, we can be in need, we can be people who are completely in need and have nothing and recognize our complete poverty when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuha nasu antum al-fuqara ila Allah, wallahu huwa al-ghaniyu al-hameed. Oh people, you are the ones in need of Allah. Entirely in need. And this is a quick crude translation. And Allah is al ghani the independent, with no need, worthy of praise. Were it His will, He would... can't really say get rid of you. It doesn't sound very nice. Quick. That's the problem with contemporary modern world. There's very little respect for anything these days. But were it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wish, He would remove you and He would bring forth another people. And this is not difficult for God to do. So this idea of experiencing the bliss of life, the gift of life, of being here. We didn't have to be here. Nobody went up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, you have to create Sidi uh, Fuad for example, who's sitting there right now. You have to create him, and if you don't, so and so will happen. Nobody did that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us out of that beautiful trait, and that perfect trait of being the creator, al-khaliq. And we share in that trait in our own way. We don't create from scratch, but we build things. That's us manifesting that name. So the attributes of, of majesty, we can't actually emulate them, so we become their opposite. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-qadir, the one who has power over all things. We become people of ajj, people of no power, incapability. That's what we are in front of Allah. And in realizing that, we have the most power on this planet. So in realizing our poorness and our need for God, we become the richest people on the planet internally because we have no need for anything else. Because you know that all power is with Him and He's the only one who can give. So when you meet people, you don't meet them while you have this need for them in your heart. And so you sit there and try to be nice to them, but it's not sincere. You don't have that conflict anymore. So in recognizing your poorness, your need, you become ultimately independent. Because you've given all your needs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In recognizing our weakness and our inability, we become the most powerful people on the planet. Again, not in a physical sense, but internally, because again, you literally become selfless. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala literally speaks to people through you. And literally, as He said Himself, when my servant continues to draw nearer to me, doing all these extra things, not just the fara as the obligatory things, but the supergatory things, the things that you don't have to do, but you do out of love, Allah says, when you continue to do that, I will love you. And when I love him or her, I become his or her hand with which he or she grasps. The feet upon which, or the legs with which they walk. The eyes with which him or her sees and looks. And the ears with which you can hear me right now. You and everybody here. Subhanallah. And if they ask me for anything, I will give them. And if they seek refuge in me from anything, I will protect them. And give them refuge. This is the ability that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us when we become selfless. We become divine people. Not that we become God. Not at all. It's the entire opposite. We become total slaves. We become totally enslaved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in doing so, you become Rabbaniyeen. As Surah 
Ali Umran would say, Kunu Rabbaniyeen. Be people of Allah. Be people of this reality. As far as the characteristics of beauty go, you embody them totally. So you become fully compassionate. You become fully merciful. To the point that some people can get those names and the prophets are given names and ultimately the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given names of the names of Allah. Not the compassionate, not the merciful, but merciful, compassionate. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ A messenger has come to you from your own soul. عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ Grievous upon whom is your suffering. حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Full of care when it comes to you. بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ And when it comes to the believers, he is full of compassion and full of mercy. He is compassionate and merciful. These are two of Allah's names, Ar-Ra'uf Ar-Rahim. And in being the, the Khalifa of Allah, he became Ra'uf Rahim, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we try to embody also the attributes of perfection. Two of those attributes, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is truth. He is truth, He is reality. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is not upon truth, Al-Muhiq. He is Al-Haq. Allah is Al-Haq. And we're supposed to be in that you have the other name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Adl. He's not just the one who is just, not only the one who is just, but He subhanahu wa ta'ala is justice itself. Allah is justice. There's no way that Allah could do injustice. And we're supposed to try to embody these attributes of perfection as much as possible. Now as human beings we err, we make mistakes, and then we come back again. And this is why He's a tawab. He's the one who accepts our repentance. But we're supposed to be just. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was the just when it came to creation. He never wronged anything. He never wronged anything, never caused injustice. And the only time that he would accept any form of aggression as a last resort would be to spread justice. And any fair-minded um, orientalist, if you've read any of the critique people who write about the Prophet wasallam, anybody who is fair and objective will say, Karen Armstrong is an example of a writer from this country who wrote about the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, a prophet for our time. And she did say that this was someone who could not tolerate injustice and would not do anything. And he hated war and he hated violence. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that in the Qur'an. And I mentioned that because we're supposed to embody his character. So I'm talking about his character with the intention of us embodying it as much as possible. Allah told him in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 216. <laughs> وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ That at times fighting has been prescribed for you. At times. And you detest it. You don't like it. And Allah doesn't either. But there may be times where you hate something and there is good in it for you. And there may be times where you love something and it is evil for you. And Allah knows and you know not. If a man walks in with a machine gun right now and starts shooting at everyone here and ends up killing about half the people in this hall and you try everything with him and he's continue, continuing to shoot and then Fuad and I, for example, jump on this man and hold him and try to just beat him up so that he would stop killing the rest of the people here. Did we use violence or not? We use violence. Now, could we say that's good violence or bad violence? Obviously, praiseworthy violence. It was good violence because we saved more violence from taking place. That's the only violence Islam sanctions. That kind of violence where it's actually causing good on the planet. Now, there are times where you might hate that. You might hate because you don't want to go and hurt that man. It is in your human nature. You don't want to. But you don't want to see the rest of the people die either. And so you might hate something. You'd hate to do it. But it is better for you. Because you wouldn't have been able to live with yourself. No, you could have done something to prevent the, innocent, the loss of innocent lives. And you just sat there with the false righteousness. This false righteousness claiming that it was more righteous to not do anything. That's not right. You're lying to yourself. You were too weak to confront reality. That would have been Allah's hand removing that man at that moment, saving the rest of his creation. That is the only understanding of jihad that traditional scholars have ever spoken about. It is a lesser evil to get rid of that greater evil if that's the only way. If that's the only way. It's to get rid of oppression and tyranny on this globe so that true peace can prevail. Not a handicapped peace 
where some people are enjoying and others are oppressed, but peace and equilibrium back, back on this planet. Now, to move on, I just want to talk a little bit about, so these are these, these attributes, and this is our condition right now. And we have, the, we have this opportunity to manifest these names as much as possible and to become people who embody the attributes of perfection, people of justice, people of beauty, people of truth, and therefore on the, on the right hand of the attributes of beauty, for example, people of compassion, people of mercy, people of husn of bun, people of good opinion of others, who can see through the mask. The Roman word for personality, the word for personality, personality, our English word, finds its root in the Roman word mask, or the Roman word persona, which means mask. These are all just masks that we wear. And the ability to see through them and see the humanity of someone. Uh, Dr. T.J. Winter, Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad, gave a talk yesterday at the first event. And he talks about how people, underneath all the masks that we front and confront each other with, there's the same soul, the same frustration and doubt, or the same serenity and confidence that you have. It's all there. We're all human. And this is a time where human beings need to realize that we all have the same common denominator. Our numerator is different. That's all. We can use an example from mathematics. And the reality is that our differences are there so that we can complete each other. So you're three over six, and I'm three over six, and together we're one. Does that make sense? It's a mathematical example. I wasn't very good at that, in algebra. Now they say, you know, algebra finds its, uh, its root in the word al-jabr, um, al-khawarizmi, the Arabic scholar, which is where we get a logarithm also, and he حساب الجبر والمقابلة الجبر and so algebra was this uh, and was making it English so anyway now this is the situation we're in but what's happened is that the world has deviated completely from living for this Adamic potential from living for this possibility of fulfilling our purpose of creation of manifesting the divine names of becoming representatives of Allah of being people of truth and beauty and justice of living a beautiful life thanking Allah for his blessings persevering over any, and enduring any tribulations that we might be put in, and then ultimately dying and going to paradise and living a life of perfection with the most perfect, sallallahu alayhi wa and all the prophets, and ultimately with Allah, with perfection itself. People don't live for that anymore. There's a lower possibility in the human being. And this is its millennium. This is its time. That's exactly what, when we said Al Pacino, because of that movie that we all saw when we were younger, what did he say? He said that nobody can deny that the 20th century is all mine. <laughs> That's what he said. It's all mine. And his name is Al Pacino, Al Shaytan al Rajim. And he literally, <laughs> Al Pacino. <laughs> and he disappears. <laughs> so, and literally, this is, the Nafs is king of the millennium. And Shaytan is literally merging with our lower Nafs, our lower possibility. And it's nothing but animalistic. That's why as soon as you deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you say there's no God, you must accept that you're an animal. It makes perfect sense. It had to be that way. When they say our, our, our ancestors were chimps, well, what else could they have been? I mean, that's the only other option within us. You have this angelic potential, you know, not really to be an angel, but to be higher than the angels because the angels disobey, cannot disobey Allah. But you have the option of disobeying Allah and yet you don't disobey Allah. That's why you can become higher than the angels or lower than the animals. Now the idea is, we do have this animalistic possibility within this. It's a reality. So I'm not offended. I mean, I'm very offended, obviously, when they say, okay, well, there's no God, you're created by chimps. Because I feel sorry for the person if they died that way. But at the same time, you can debate it with them. And if you've studied it, there are ways. And people do come back to the realization that they have a higher self. But let's just agree for a minute that if you don't believe in that higher self or you're not thinking about it, all you have is your lower self. All you have is that lower possibility. And what does it do, that lower self? Pleasure seeking and pain avoiding. That's how it functions. I want to have fun, and I don't want to have any pain. And fun is defined as material and physical. And pain is material and physical. So how can you pray, Fajr? How can you get up and pray in the morning when you don't have any consciousness or cognizance of the metaphysical reality of prayer? وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي Establish prayer. That's the outward form. لِذِكْرِي To remember me. For my remembrance. That's the inward reality. If you don't get any of that, why should you persist upon prayer? I mean, we are Muslims and everything, but we, we, we're in that lower state that the world is forcing us into. Similarly, with any of this, all, all we see is the pain getting up. It's very, very cold. You know, you have to get into the bathroom. And, and I don't know about your, your English, this idea of the taps. There's something here. I see, there's something with the taps here. You can't really get, most of the time, medium like temperature. You have to get really cold water 
really hot water. And let me just say, this whole radical middle wave project, all it's about is it's fixing up the water situation. <laughs> no, really. All we want to do is make you guys like us in Egypt, where you can turn on the, 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 the hot water and the cold water and then get a nice little middle way. You know, because it's just too cold on the one hand, and it's very, very hot on the other. You can make tea. I was like, you know, really? So, so this is all it's about. I mean, you can remember that. This is what this radical middle way is. It's about leaving extremes. It's about leaving extremes and going to the middle way. And I go on for a moment of talking to long, but what I want to do is structure this a little bit is to find the situation of the world today. It's a world, it's a water type situation. Any of them, you know? So now, the, the idea of the, the, the situation of the world being extreme, people who embody religion outwardly only, so they do the outward action, but they do it because they feel it's in the world today. They feel like they have to go back to the ideological scheme that can either come or become the that this globalization is happening too quickly, and, and, and people are confronting each other so quickly, and you just can't deal with this idea of complete unity. I mean, these advertisers, I'm not worried, we're just writing with, these advertisers, we thought they had Marx and Spence, oh my God, what are these guys doing? I mean, he was just telling me there's a study that's been done about, like, apparently too many car crashes were happening because a larger than life, semi, almost more than fully, whatever naked woman was larger than life, and people were just stopping and crashing into each other. Continue. See, there's obviously something wrong, you know, and uh, Steve Tyler from Aerosmith, he sang this before, living on the edge, living on the edge, there's something wrong with the world today, I don't know what it is, and I'm only quoting the lyrics here, so I'm not telling you listen to music or not with all this disputation in the Oma, there's just two opinions, think whichever one you want, and don't give the other side a hard time, really, that's just the way it is, again, you know, but anyway, and, and I'm just quoting lyrics, so I'm quoting a poem, Right? And the Prophet said he quoted poetry. So he said, you know, I don't want to digress. If he didn't quote a poem, I'll digress. And there was a poem, and basically the, the poet said, Is it not uh, that everything devoid of God that has, doesn't have Allah in it is falsehood? And the Prophet said that that part of the poem was the most truthful thing a poet has ever said. SubhanAllah. So to find truth in what other people are saying and then to complete it for them. Habib Ali al-Jifri, whom we have the honor of listening to later today, inshaAllah. In yesterday's, his talk yesterday, talks about that hadith where the Prophet sallallahu says, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ I have only been sent for nothing other than completing the human character and the, 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 the generous traits and the noble traits to perfect the noble traits of human character. In other words, the summary of what he was sent with is that. Everything else is underneath that. But it's, it all goes for that purpose. So the reason I cite this is because you're supposed to actually look for truth in others. Even if they don't outwardly share your same religion. Just like we were hearing earlier. Someone not of your faith. Find truth in it and then complete it. Say, you know what? That's very right. SubhanAllah, that's so right. Did you know that that same God, that same reality sent down another messenger? But of course not right away. Don't be preachy about it. But ultimately, when you become friend, talk about it. That's your hal. That's your say. Yes, and, and that final mes messenger, no, he wasn't lying. All these misconceptions. Some guy came to me yesterday asked me about all these misconceptions about Islam. Alhamdulillah, I was just very relaxed. I answered and he said, I didn't know there were answers to these things. Wallahi, there are answers to these things. Because, I mean, if you're sincere, you're going to know if it's truth or not. You're going to know. I mean, if it's truth, follow it. If it's not, don't. But why are we panicking? It's a time of panic, isn't it? So, I digressed way so much right now. <laughs> Yesterday was more structured. But anyway, and so this is the message of the Prophet ﷺ. Completing this human character. And, and we're supposed to be able to see the truth in others. Now, can anyone remember where I was going with this when I said I'm going to digress? Come on. Help me out. Aerosmith, thank you. Now, we're quoting the poem. So he said, there's something wrong with the world today. I don't know what it is. There's something wrong with our eyes. Da -da -da. It's just a neural association. We're seeing things in a different way. 
And God knows it ain't His. It sure ain't no surprise. We're living on the edge. The Arabic word for extremism is ghulu, but another Arabic word for extremism is tafarruf, and it's the modern one, tafarruf. And it comes from the root word tarf, which means edge. We're living in a time of extremism. We're living in a time of extremism. Now, one form of extremism is embodying the outward forms of religion without experiencing anything inside, without tasting the sweetness of faith, without tasting halawat al-iman. وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَوْ يُطِيعُكُمْ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْرِ لَعَنِتُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمْ الْإِيمَانِ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَكَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْعِصْيَانِ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الرَّاشِدُونَ فَضْلًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَنِعْمَةً وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ And know that the Messenger of Allah is with you, is within you. صلى الله عليه وسلم. Physically present with him and he is present in our hearts. Spiritually, to this very day, He is with you, He is in you, He is amongst you. Were, were He to obey you, now listen to this, were He to obey you in many things, things that you would ask for not knowing what your true benefit is, all the things that you'd want on your lower self, that I would want when I function at my lower possibility. I don't want to pray. Rasulullah, can I not pray? Well, some guy went up to him and said, Rasulullah, allow me to do zina. Rasulullah, allow me to fornicate. That happened. So Allah is saying, were He to obey you in many things like this, can I just do this? Can I not do that? Were He to give your lower self its way? لَعَنِتُمْ Ultimately you would suffer. Because you're depriving yourself of the nutrition of your soul. You want to live for instant gratification, but you'll always feel empty. And you'll end up singing like, like Stephen Tyler. That's what they did. They deprived themselves of it, but at least they sang about it. They go up, you know, and if they don't kill themselves, they're still trying to tell us about it. And occasionally, some of them find Allah. Cat Stevens did Yusuf's song. You know, and we ask Allah to guide everybody. Because they're looking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the reality. No matter, even if they show you animosity, even if they become your enemies, you have to realize they're still searching. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu. Sayyidna Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu. What was he going to do on the day that he accepted Islam. A few minutes before that, what was on his agenda? Oh, I'm just going to have breakfast, walk down, I'm going to kill the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to kill the Prophet. That's them. There's still hope in him. And on the day he was going to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah made this person submit to him and become a Muslim. And become a Muslim. And become... You know when I hear the word non-Muslim? What I think... I feel very sad. I feel sad. Not in a negative way, not nothing against a non-Muslim, not at all. That's the antithesis of my message. But I feel sad because it's saying, not a submissive person. That's what it's saying. And it's our fault. Everybody should submit to Allah. That's the reality. Everybody should believe in truth, in beauty, in justice, and embody these characteristics. Now, of course, when you listen to it with your lower level, as the world is always listening, everybody should be Muslim. Everybody should be a terrorist. Everybody should eat biryani. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that everybody should submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody should believe in the message that was sent down to bring us back. Remember the beginning of the talk? All of you descend. I never finished translating it. Subhanallah. All of you descend. Leave it. And then guidance from me, Allah says, will come to you. And whosoever follows my guidance, they have nothing to fear and they have nothing to grieve over. Allah will bring us back. That's what the Qur'an is. That's what the Prophet Muhammad is, وسلم, a rope sent from heaven by Allah to bring us back to our higher self, which is paradise on earth because where we're in our higher self, we have sakina, we have tranquility, we have halawat al-iman, we have the sweetness of faith that we're talking about. And that's what I mean. Everybody should believe in Allah, in, the, in reality, in truth, in beauty, in justice, and in anything that reality has sent down. And what is the final thing that reality has sent down? The Qur'an. To confirm what was before us 
and a final message from Allah to all of us, to every Adamic person, man or woman. And who was the person who was sent with it? Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Ana Sayyidu waladi Adam wa la fakhr. I am the master of the children of Adam on the day of arising. And I do not boast. Because he was the one who embodied these characteristics and who manifested the divine name the most. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The reality of the khilafah. Not just the outward political form people keep wanting. Just like we pray but we're not experiencing anything, we also want a political reality. And, and, and we always say, that's, that's the problem. With. The problem is we're not experiencing Islam yet. We're not submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in doing so, we become part of a group and we demonize the other. Instead of being able to spiritually conquer the other. So that they realize that you're true. So you're not conquering anyone. You're just living reality so much that people see you as the most beautiful thing on this planet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that in closing. And I did speak about something very, very different than what I really had intended. Please rap. I mean, I'm not going to rap. You want me to sing? <laughs> okay, it's with a W. Uh, wrap up would be what I would have said. So, I was intending to speak about the condition that we're in and the solution. And part of it was said because the solution is in tezkiyah and purification and becoming people of purity and cleaning our hearts so that our entire perception of the world changes and of the other changes. And in doing so, the truth of Allah comes out through us to the world and the world changes. And it becomes the middle way again and not extremism. But we, and that's why we move from what they call here protest to engagement. Protest to engagement. Now, somebody said earlier that, you know, protest is a form of engagement. Well, protest when done in a civic Islamic manner is a form of engagement. But I think the protest that the organizers were talking about is this lower self, anger, anger, anger. I think that's what they meant when they wrote from protest of the lower self, to engaging with humanity, to seeing them with the eye of the heart, and therefore actually being able to let true Islam prevail, true submissiveness to Allah, sakina, tranquility, serenity, no anxiety, no stress. We can't live like this as Muslims, and, and people are not Muslims. We shouldn't let them live like that either. We need to live in peace. We were created by peace himself, to live in peace. And even when a test happens, we endure it. You should see the people who are of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people who are close to Allah, saintly people, people. They, they are able to endure the greatest forms of tribulation and still live in peace. I know a man who's been in bedridden for 40 years, not moving anything other than his two eyes. And one of my teachers called him up and said, speak to this man. He's been bedridden for 40 years and he could move nothing other than his eyes. And I spoke to him and said, As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, my son? Alhamdulillah, how are you? And I'm almost like feeling pitiful. And subhanAllah, he spiritually conquered me. And he said, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. He said it from his heart, Alhamdulillah. And you know, may you enter Jannah, the Shaykh said to him. He said, what do you, you know, Jazakallah khair for your sabr. May Allah reward you for patience. He says, for what? I'm in Jannah. I'm in Jannah, but there's one thing missing. I just want to see Allah. How? What was inside? What was inside this person? That's what we want inside us. That's what would enable us to engage for whatever number of days are left for us on this planet to truly fulfill our purpose. The reality is that the most sound interpretation of what the word kufr is, right, to call someone kafir, is when they've seen the truth and knowingly covered it up. That's when they become kuffar. But as Imam al-Ghazali beautifully showed, if someone doesn't hear of the Prophet Muhammad or the Qur'an, or hears about them in a distorted way, as is happening today because of us, not necessarily us, but people who attribute themselves sociologically to us, what happens? The Imam said, and they deny it, they cover it up, have to close it, they cover it up, what happens is they don't become kuffar. Because what they've covered up is something you would cover up as well. That's not Islam. And so what is this person's situation? He is Ahl al-Fatra. The people of the period of time in which there were no prophets. In other words, this person is not accountable according to a sound Dalai's opinion. And in doing so, in being so, they are better than us. We're accountable for not representing truth and beauty and justice. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to them. But say this to a lower self and listen to how it would react. No, no, kuffar, kuffar. 
That's just a lower state that we need to transcend. And so the state of halawat al-iman is what I want to leave you with. Allah says that were he, were he to obey you in many things, you would suffer. But Allah has caused you, now listen with your heart, but Allah has caused you to love iman. It's not just something you believe in, but it's something you love. You're attached to it. Your heart wants it. And He has adorned it, made it beautiful in your heart. And He has caused you to hate disbelief, transgression, and disobedience. They are the people of right guidance. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الرَّاشِدُونَ We want to claim we have the truth. Let's embody this state first. And then say we are people of the truth, people of Allah. And so to close, the Prophet ﷺ said that there are three things that if they are in a human being, they would find this state, this halawat al-iman, this sweetness, this beauty that makes you in no need of anything else. The first one is to love Allah and His Messenger more than anything else other than both of them. The second one is to be able to love a human being for nothing other than the sake of Allah, for no personal benefit. And we need to learn this. And the third one is to hate to go back into disbelief as much as you would hate to be thrown physically into a fire. May Allah give us this halawat al-iman May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to benefit of the scholars that we're going to listen to later. The point I would have loved to gone into would have, to have gone into would have been the idea of reference, of listening to scholars who truly embody this faith and have studied from people who have studied from people who have studied from people who have studied from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It looks like people here understand this concept of sanad, of an unbroken chain of transmission. They are the heirs of the Prophet. They are warathas al-anbiya, as the Prophet said, al-ulama warath al-anbiya. Scholars are the heirs of the Prophet. May Allah allow us to benefit of them later. I apologize for rambling on a little bit. It was just a difficult situation by the time I had gotten here. Anything correct I have said is from Allah. Anything incorrect is from my own soul. وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum.